If I told you of a phantom engine with no pulse, no vibration, smoother than a new beamer, yet long buried for some reason, wouldn't you reopen Pandora's box? What? It's just fancy shapes dancing the same old auto cycle. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Only that's all handled by one spinning Dorito simultaneously. Every stroke a power stroke. Behold the machine gun in our world of flintlocks. That's why there's no vibration, because there is no piston and no reciprocating mass. No need for a crankshaft to jerk around with motion conversion, nor valves lifters, no cam chain, no cams. There's a carb and a spark plug, and that's all it need borrow from any other engine. <sighs> well, that doesn't sound bad at all. Come on, baby. You want to ride my wankle? Line. This engine is called the Vankel, named in the dark days of West Germany. Maybe that's why I have a headlamp kill switch on the left for midnight runs to the Berlin Wall. No, it leaves indicators to fit beside my throttle hand, as is impossible to use. Yeah, well, this machine wasn't meant to arrive flawless, but fast. When Hercules got their W2000 to market in 1974, it was the world's first rotary motorcycle. The rush job meant buying in a general purpose wankel, one of 20,000 units tacked onto motorcycles or chainsaws, snowmobiles, whatever. So if my wankel looks hung on, well that's because it is. Hence pre-mix gas, when your unit might be installed down, up, sideways, well, where do you put the oil sump? You don't. You lubricate the fuel and have it flow through the main bearing. A labyrinthine intake that limits horsepower to 27, nowhere near the Wankel's potential. Nor its space-saving potential. You see, rotary engines are smaller if you don't have a carburetor taking up half the frame space, and if you orient the rotor so that it directly drives the transmission, rather than a 90-degree bevel gear. Hercules failed at both because they failed to build their own engine. But if they didn't design Pandora's box, well, who did? It's the scariest philosophical question born in the bathhouses of ancient Rome. Whose wankle am I touching? Meet Felix Wankel, geometry genius and complete wanker. Felix was once fired by the Nazis for being too militant. He received his pardon in an SS badge from an old buddy named Adolf. And his engine workshop was provided by another friend named Goring. So yeah, f these guys. But just because the Nazis did it doesn't mean it's inherently bad. I once went to Poland in September. It was lovely. You just can't get carried away. In the same way, our wankle is lovely in that it spins and makes no vibration. You just 
Gotta know that when this triangle goes boom, most pressure pushes right round, but some pushes wrong round, and some more pushes sideways, which isn't technically possible. I've seen better rotating efficiency from a drunk hamster. Now, to some extent, we can dig a cavity to give combustion more of a barn door to push against. But this carves into our compression ratio, which already sucks because triangles and ovals, they just don't squeeze much. Eight and a half to one? I could get stronger compression with a bowl of chili and some butt clenching. So forget torque, forget fuel efficiency, the ideal Wankel is a lightweight plaything that revs high to make power and really benefits from a smaller, vibration-free engine. Motorcycles, how did this not catch on? And what we're gonna do is sneak the Hercules into a modern dealership and see if people react like, hey, this makes sense. I just sneak it to the front so they're more likely to notice. The rotary cycle kind of ejects gas while it's still exploding. Greta's in Glasgow, eh? At 25 to 1 oil, it's an environmental disaster. But how else do you lubricate seals that neither sit nor spin nor reciprocate, but oscillate? And that is why people think this engine is cursed. They consider Wankel's doodle the stuff of paper, not pavement, because the man never earned an engineer certificate or a driver's license. Just paper. Our W2000 crumples when insurance companies decide its 294cc combustion chamber is actually three, one on each side of a triangle rotor. Classified an 882, it's overpriced and dead on arrival. Norton buys up the pieces of that engine, fails to sell four derivatives, then also goes bankrupt. Suzuki narrowly avoids a similar fate by abandoning their rotary after 12 months. A one-year stand so shameful, legend says they dumped unsold stock in the sea off Japan. Van Veen is the last to sell a Wankel motorcycle, surviving only 38 units before they, too, fall. Huh. Well, Van Veen's engine came from a Citroen, which flopped so hard they bought back and crushed them all. GM, Ford, Mercedes, BMW, John Deere, Curtis Wright. Oh, Mazda. And they spent half a century learning to machine gaping parabolas, then gave up on making Wankel's work. 30 hollow licenses, good for 150 million Deutschmarks, a paper kingdom for a Nazi. Maybe the curse is real. Then all that evil flew from Pandora's box and never quite settles. See, this very wankel birthed Norton's R&D, which is currently taking off in suicide drones. And it turns out rotaries are worse than the stuff of paper. They're finally working perfectly and profitably on air. True killing machine.